everybody, uh, welcome to the webinar. I had to make sure my mic was plugged in. See, you guys don't see all this equipment I got. Mics and and all this all this stuff here. I got this. You guys know about this. Boom. You know about that. Welcome. It is uh what is it? Wednesday, someday in February. <laughs> uh but today, I want to um, talk a little bit about uh, our continuation of sales. We haven't had, I was out of town in uh, beautiful San Diego for meetings, and I wasn't, uh, wasn't able to get a webinar in, but we got uh, this live webinar, and then we've got another one that we're doing today. So you'll be caught up for sure. But one of the things that it gets me so excited is <clears throat> the um, topic of sales. As you know, we've been focusing on that all through January, all through February, maybe even a little bit through March here coming up. But we've been focusing on sales. Why is this important? Well, this is how you as an agent and broker make your living. If you're not good at sales, you're probably not going to make as much. You'll get those friends and family that you just become an agent broker and they're going to let you list their house or you're going to uh, represent a buyer. You may not know what you're doing. But what's the longevity of that? What's the long term? Are you are you really working um, to build sales skills? And that's really what we're talking about here. On this episode of uh, our webinars and training, we're going to be talking uh, about something called SPIN. What SPIN is, is uh, a way that you can start to organize your sales process. Now, one of two things is going to happen. Your sales process could mean uh, over the long haul, over a few weeks of courting someone as a uh, buy-sell rent. You know, that's our client, buy-sell rent. So you might be courting a seller to list their home, and it might be over a, a few-week period. It might be over a few-month period with uh, your email marketing, your text marketing, all of that. Other times, you're going to be in a listing meeting, and you've got to... Uh, Sell. You've got to be able to put yourself in a position to sell. And to do that, you've got to organize your sales um, process. And we're going to do that by way of two ways. The first way that we're going to do that, uh, that is this topic on this webinar, which is called SPIN. SPIN stands for Situation, Problem, Implication. What does that imply? And uh, Need. Uh, what does that need? And that need is always you, your services, you as an agent, broker, that type of thing. And then the second way that we're going to uh, accomplish this is by um, uh, organizing our conversation with uh, things like open-end cl questions, closed-end questions, um, what's a condition, what's a objection, what is a buying question, we're going, those things are going to be triggers. And so some of the things that you're going to do and some of the, the, those things your client or prospective client or clients are going to do. So uh, we're going to get to that on the next uh, training. On this training, we're going to focus on spin. So let me share my screen with all of you. And uh, let's go to the right page here. I'm just going to basically bring out my notes. I was kind of going through everything. And um, this, this, this screen right here kind of, kind of uh, gives the best definition of what spin is. Now, first of all, spin, this is a great book, by the way, it's by Neil Rackham and spin selling. If uh, I said on last week's or two weeks webinar, if you get a chance to read that, read that. This is the book. Uh, I've read it twice, um, going through it a third time. Uh, but um, the best selling isn't uh, all about your products and what you can offer. It's very much about the customer's need, their need. Neil Rackham, that's the author of that book. And in that is where this spin scenario comes from. So if we break each one of these letters down, this is uh, some interesting things for you to think about. So we're going to guide uh, the conversation 
uh, like I said earlier, by way of open-end questions, closed-end questions, um, understanding what a condition and objection are, the differences between those, understanding what a buying question is, and those are triggers either by your presented by you or the client or clients that you're with. But spin is how you're going to organize that. So you're going to uh, be asking questions, open and closed ended questions based on what is happening with their situation. Or if you don't know their situation, these are what the questions are for. So situation questions help you understand the buyer's current situation. The goal is to gather as much information. For instance, uh, what do the client's uh, current processes look like uh, in, a, in the time, um, in the context of a homeowner or a buyer of a property? What's their process look like for buying a home or selling a home? Uh, number two there, what tools are they already using? I mean, are they using the internet? Probably. It's 2020. Are they thinking about Zillow? Truly. Are they thinking about FISBO for sale by owner? Um, are they thinking about using another agent? You know, that's certainly something that you would want to be aware of. The last one there, how often do they use them? Well, in selling a house or buying a house, these are more one-time events. You know, somebody's going to sell a house uh, every, you know, five to seven years on average. Um, but uh, so this isn't something they're going to use all the time, but their situation may be one in which they have to sell uh, the property. They have to sell it. Why? Uh, divorce. Uh, there's a sickness. Someone's retiring. They're downsizing. They're upsizing. All kinds of reasons as to why they would sell. So that really becomes what their situation is. And you're going to get there by the type of questions that you ask, both open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. We'll talk about how we get and utilize those questions on the next webinar. But you really want to find out and understand completely and very thoroughly what their situation is. Okay, number two. Uh, so number two, let's see if I can, oh, I was trying to get tricky there, I can't do that. Got it. So number two is the problem. Problem questions. Note, in every one of these, you're going to, uh, most of these anyway, you're going to be asking questions. Problem questions help illustrate different problems your product, or in this case, your service, uh, solves for your client. Some examples are this. Number one, do you feel the inter-team communication is as good as it can be? Um, that's probably not as appropriate for selling a house, but it could be, um, hey, how do you plan on selling uh, your house if you're not using a real estate agent or broker? Uh, that would be a problem, right? Or at least you're identifying what that problem could be. Um, the, the next one here, at least in this example, how does this impact stakeholder buy-in? What you could do is say, well, listen, if you don't sell your house in the next uh, four months, like you said, you need to do. Um, what does that mean for your family? So the, the same type of questions are, are going on here. Um, what we're trying to do with the problem is we're trying to not only identify what the problem is, but we're really also trying to, to you know, um, have that client feel that pain and identify what that pain is. And that's done by questions. <clears throat> Again, there's open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. Uh, a closed-end question would be like a yes or no answer where you're getting them to uh, say yes or no. Do you want to sell your house in the next two months? Yes. Uh, an open-ended question would be like this. Uh, listen, if you, if you, for some reason, you try to sell your house on your own and you don't sell it in this, the next four months, like you said you need to do, what does that mean for you and your family? and then let them talk. That's uh, open-ended questions are very good for getting out um, uh, big pieces of information and, and really pulling that pain, if you will, out of uh, the client. Uh, the third uh, scenario within SPIN is, what does that imply? What's the implication uh, of that problem? If the problem persists, and this is where I kind of lead into that with that last open-ended question, Implication questions hone in on the problems that you've discovered. 
showing the client why they need to be solved. And, and this is really, uh, those are transitional questions going from spin to implication. Uh, but those are very, very important because they tie all of these together. And then uh, it gets to the last point here in a minute that we'll discuss that really points to what the solution is. And the solution is always going to be you. The solution is always going to be uh, your services that you provide, your real estate brokerage, uh, and more specifically, you as the agent or broker. So impl uh, just let me read this again. Implication questions hone in on the problems you've discovered, showing the client why they need to be solved. For instance, how much time is wasted on inefficient communication each week? So this particular one is kind of highlighting the fact that time is wasted. How much more could your teams achieve each week without those time sinks? So and, uh, this one is highlighting how much more productive they could be. And then the third one here, have communication problems ever delayed product rollout? So you're highlighting in this example that their products were delayed, their new products were delayed, their clients couldn't buy them, hence uh, there's a delay in receiving revenue in for the company. You can do the same thing with your real estate. So let's say that instead of working with a seller, now we're working with a buyer. And so when you're uh, asking questions that are going to be under this implication role uh, of spin, you're going to be asking things like, you know, if, if, um, um, if, we're not, if you're not able to find a uh, property that you want to buy by the holidays, what does that mean for your family? I like that family thing because it gets the client starting to think other than themselves a little bit. Uh, or this one uh, could work. Um, you know, if we if we uh, if we're not if you're not able to find a house um, that uh, rolls within your budget, uh, what does that mean for you, or how would that affect you? Uh, is another good question. Get them to start not only thinking about their families, but coming back to that now and having them think about themselves. In other words, what what implication means is what is the result of this problem if not solved? How does this um, conjure up or how does this create a negative situation for that client <clears throat> if you've heard me train in the past you know i've talked a little bit about uh chemistry in the brain and sales and what that does we talked about the chemical called cortisol in any time you are increasing stress in mammals at least or definitely in humans um which are mammals by the way uh you the brain releases uh, cortisol as a defense for stress. And you want to release that stress with a uh, solution, which is going to be the end in need payoff. But in this implication, it's important that you add a little bit of uh, stress or discomfort to your client, not on purpose. You don't want to go out and hurt anybody specifically, but you want to at least highlight and, and put a picture, maybe even a movie in their minds of, hey, if this problem is not solved, what does that mean? How does this affect you? You know, could it, how bad could it be? And let them tell you. The uh, average mind is going always going to go into protection mode, especially when this cortisol is is uh, being produced. And let them tell you. They're they're always going to tell you either I don't know, or they're going to paint a much worse picture for you. Um, then you could paint for them. Uh, it's just a natural um, protection mode by, by the brain. If they say, I don't know, that is going to lead you to ask more pointed questions in that route until they give you an answer. Um, and again, there's a, there's a articulate way of doing this. There's an elegance in uh, doing this as well. You don't want to just keep hammering and, and uh, not remembering the rapport or trust that you've built. That's uh, also important. <clears throat> so let's go to the last one here, uh, N in spin. Uh, need payoff. The need payoff, again, is always you, your services, your brokerage, yeah, but again, most importantly, you, how you're going to be helping that client. Remember, our clients are always buy, sell, rent um, scenarios. So rather than just telling your client, how your product or service can address their pain points, 
need payoff questions, lead your customer to those conclusions on their own. <laughs> you see, if it comes from the salesperson, if it comes from the real estate agent and broker, it's always not taken as um, deeply or as um, as effective as when it comes from them. When it comes from them, it becomes gospel to them. And it's really insightful that, you know, they, they, they put this here and you should be thinking about how important this is. Let me just read this again. Rather than telling your client how your product or service, in this case, can address their pain points, need payoff questions, lead your client, customer or client to those conclusions on their own. So I'm going to give you some questions that they're asking, and then we're going to change around and turn it into um, what a real estate agent or broker could ask. Uh, number one, would a comprehensive product management tool increase stakeholder buy-in? That's number one. And number two, would that be valuable for your team? So a question that you can ask as an agent, if you were working with a client that wanted to sell their property, you might say something like, you know, hey, would it help? If you were using an agent that has sold more houses in your neighborhood than anybody else and has more experience with regard to days on market and how to set a price for a house that's accurate, that sells that house not only quickly, but for the maximum dollar amount. That's a great way to, you're not saying, hey, use me. You're saying, hey, would that help you? And they would be like, yes. And eventually you want to even, if you've, done, if you've done this right, you want to get them to the point where they're saying, well, hey, why aren't, uh, am I able to use you for that? Or can I use Sally for that if Sally's in your office or Heather or, or Mike or whoever it would be? And that's what you want to get to. And if you've done it right and you've practiced, they will come up with that question. Well, what would it look like if I used you? Or why don't I just use you, uh, you know, since you have that experience? Um, that's when spin has worked at its best. And this does take practice. Um, you should be, you know, it, it takes practice whether you practice in the mirror or talking to yourself in the shower or uh, with your significant other. This does take practice. I would definitely go through this. I would definitely read um, this book by, let me see if I can move this, this book. Let me see if I can increase that. Maybe that size will go. There we, uh, no, it won't. So this book by Neil Rackham, Spin Selling, is very, it's an easy read, but it's very, uh, it's very effective in, in building this sales <clears throat> um, skeleton, if you will. A lot of agents, so let's talk about the, the spin of most agents. So the situation of most agents is, number one, they don't know how to sell. Um, but number two, they don't know how to put a client, a prospective client, um, into a situation where you're able to help them best. You see, selling is about helping your client or customer solve their issue or problem. You're in service uh, to them. And that's what real spin uh, selling in this technique uh, does so well. And this is why um, I like it so much. Um, the spin uh, sales method on the first one, the S for situation, really tries to understand what the situation is of that buyer so that you can identify what that problem is, or more importantly, have the client identify what that problem is. And if that problem goes unsolved, what does that imply? Just as important as if that problem gets solved, what does that imply? And then finally, what is the need paid off? What do they need to solve that? What do they need to move on and, and get a positive result uh, with that? Uh, most agent and brokers don't have that practice, don't have that discipline to go down that realm. I've, I've heard of and talked to a lot of agents and brokers that think that they're really good salespeople. And in a sense, they're not great salespeople. They have just you know, kind of built their network over a couple of years and uh, are really dealing with people they know, which is certainly part of sales. Building rapport and trust is certainly part of that. But if you really want to scale and if you really want to make this something that um, is your career, you're going to become uh, the best salesperson around. Um, let me go through a couple of things here that I think are going to help you as we're, we're cruising towards uh uh, the bottom of the hour here. Um, 
So the spin model selling, this is uh, something that you should organize your thoughts, uh, be disciplined as a salesperson, as a real estate agent and broker. Um, so the situation is speaking to that very person that talks about what they will be experiencing, what they're experiencing now. And even when you get into the problem and what does that imply, you're not talking about necessarily what they're experiencing now. That's their situation. But when it we get to implication, we're going to be talking to them about what they could be experiencing. It's really uh, important for them. So one deals with um, the present situation and the um, implication deals with the future situation. Remember to paint a picture or more importantly, paint a movie in their mind when you're going through this, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, number uh, B there, the problem, you want to help identify what that is. So in the problem segment, here's what your objections are. Um, you want to create discontent. You know, this picture of uh, that I borrowed uh, has the guy in the water with the shark swimming around him. Do you think this person in the water would have some discontent? For sure, by far. How do you posture yourself up to where you can help them? Hey, I've got something that you may want if you're in the water uh, with sharks. Uh, it's a life preserver or it's a ladder to a helicopter or something. Um, and then finally, urgency. How are you building urgency to take care of that? You build that in when you're talking about what does that imply? Um, do you want to take care of that issue slow or fast? Do you want to take care of that issue now or later? Um, and why? And, and let them tell you that. This is, should be during your conversations with them. And then finally, frame the solution. And a great way to frame the solution, whenever we're talking about framing, it's creating a, a, it's creating a, um, <clears throat> a void where uh, that void needs to be filled. Meaning, you know, if, if that gets solved, picture and imagine if that gets solved, what that means for your family. If you're able to sell your house in uh, within the next 90 days and you're able to get the maximum dollar amount for that house, what does that mean for your family in moving to Florida? Uh, what will that do? And, you know, you're starting to present a, a, a void where they will want to get that solution. They will want to do that. So the void is not having the solution. And in filling that void, that's where you come in. This is a frame. If you look at this picture on your screen, think of that. If, if I'm framing something, the focus is, is right here. Um, if you're framing the solution the same way, you want them to look right at you. You are the frame. Okay, so that's uh, really the steps there. And then loss of money, time, energy, there may be some other things in there, family, you know, um, um, opportunity, things like that. But start to focus on this when you're at the implication stage. And then finally, the need stage. Um, again, the need is always, always... Always you and your services. Always, always. That's what that points to. So that very frame points to you. That's the void. And all of a sudden, you fill the frame. Watch. If this is a frame, by the way, I didn't do that to the to have the Anton logo, but that, that worked out great. If this is the frame and I'm not there, it fills a void until, boom, guess what? I'm now their solution. And Anton is their solution. So that's what framing is about. We'll talk about more on framing as we go along, but I wanted to do one more thing here. Um, one of the best marketers of my lifetime has been a guy by the name of Dan Kennedy. And if you haven't heard him um, uh, about him, he, he's written a lot of books on marketing. Guerrilla marketing is uh, one of the more popular ones and things. <clears throat> but he's got a little bit of a variation of spin, but I thought this would be important to give you another perspective. Um, if you want to organize your conversation, if you want to start organizing your email marketing campaigns, your text marketing campaigns, this may be a good model to follow. So 
Um, this is another version of spin. This is how you market for prospects. This could be sales copy, a video, or a landing page. Or guess what, guys? It could be a communication with a client, buy, sell, rent. Uh, and it goes something like this. Who are you trying to attract as a customer? Who are you selling to? That's number one. Number two, where do you find this ideal customer? Can you buy a list, social media, warm market? This is the, kind of the marketing side to find your clients. Uh, number three, what pain or problem do they have? They're looking to buy a house. They're looking to sell a house. They want a vacation home. They want to rent a place, an apartment, or a house. What facts or stats do you have about this pain or problem? You know, Tom, I know that you have this problem. You know you're not alone. Uh, hundreds of people uh, have, have uh, that same problem. And here are the stats to back that up. Let me show you a couple stats. <coughs> you may not say it in the same way. That sounded a little goofy there at the end. You might say something like, you know, you're not alone, Tom. There's been millions of people that have been in the same situation. As a matter of fact, we've helped thousands of people uh, like that. Here's some stats in this particular neighborhood on houses that have sold in the days on market that they've been in place um, kind of thing. So that's how you're going to use that in conversation. How do your prospects try to solve that problem or pain now? Well, you know, especially if the client is looking to do a uh, for sale by owner or they're using another agent, uh, you know, you can identify that by saying, you know, the biggest problem that we see in this neighborhood is um, we a lot of times come in after the fact, after the fact that uh, the client or home seller is using another agent that may be less experienced, not knocking the other agent, but um, if you ha you don't have a lot of experience in this uh, situation, you might be pricing the property wrong. You might be not doing the marketing that you should. And what that does is that adds to days on market. So a lot of times we come in as the second broker and uh, we end up do, uh, marketing different. We end up adjusting some things on the price points. Um, and your house sells. It sells in the uh, average days on market time. And it also sells for the maximum dollar amount. And we find that we have customers or clients coming back and say, why didn't I use you first? I wasted time, energy, money, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But this is, this is uh, good for you guys to um, uh, check out. Number six. What keeps your ideal customer up at 3 a.m.? This is where you're starting to build the cortisol. You know, if, if you can't um, build this and, and start to build that cortisol and, and add stress, you're not going to be as effective here. So what keeps them up? Not selling their house. What keeps them up? Not selling it at a price point that's going to pay off their mortgage. Not selling it at a price point to where they can retire down in Florida. So uh, that's the things that you should be talking about. What happens to your ideal customer if this pain or problem goes unsolved? We talked a little bit about that. Um, and then this is where you come in. This is where you become uh, the hero in your story here. So this is where you come in. What credibility do you have to solve this problem or pain uh, for your client or customer, i.e., we sold more houses in this neighborhood than any other brokerage and any other agent or broker. What's your solution? Um, after you have the cortisol increased in their brain, they're stressed out. They don't really know what to do. So one of the things that you want to do is let them off the hook. You want to let them shoulders go down and let them uh, breathe a sigh of relief. And it might go something like this. Hey, Tom, I, I really understand what you're facing here and what challenges you're facing. And, uh, you know, I've got good news for you. Would you like some good news? Did you see how I just said that? Would you like some good news? And Tom's going to say, yeah, definitely. Um, and go, Tom, look, we've sold more houses in this neighborhood than any other brokerage. We've, uh, Mary, uh, a broker in our office, is a specialist at dealing with, you know, condominiums just like yours or houses just like yours. Um, uh, what you're going to want us to do is come in. We're going to talk a little bit about price points. We're going to talk about a little bit about what we need to do with the house, some minor things, and then let us get this on the market. The market's hot, um, priced right. We can sell this thing, uh, in the next 90 days and, and we're going to have a great 
probability of selling that at the highest dollar amount possible. How does that sound? And then let them talk, right? So that's how you're going to start to set that up. Uh, what makes your solution unique or different than anyone else? Start thinking in that realm. Well, we already talked about the fact that you've sold more houses in this uh, particular market than anybody else. But what you also could say is, listen, we market to uh, 50 different sites on the internet. Every house that we list gets their own unique uh, web page um, uh, and uh, landing page, whatever you're going to be putting together, website even. Um, you know, we're going to, uh, we're also um, uh, have an open house strategy that's unique to yours. For instance, at the open houses, we bring in a theme. You know, the theme is based on what the house looks like. And what, you get the point. Uh, but that's kind of what your unique selling uh, proposition, what makes you different than anybody else. Um, what are specific features or deliverables of your solution? This is how you list properties or how you find uh, a house for a buyer that's looking for one. What are the benefits of your solution? Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. What are the top three alternatives to your solution and how are you different? Uh, you know, FISBO, using another agent and not selling at all. Those would be three and you could highlight those. Uh, what customer success stories can you share? Social proof is huge. Um, if you are not as an agent broker and not carrying social proof with testimonials and and uh, it, the pictures are great as well as videos. Videos are fantastic. But if you're not using social proof, you should. That's definitely the um, uh, a thing that's going to close a lot of your deals, do a lot of the heavy lifting there. So if you haven't been doing that, go back to your uh, client base that you've worked with in the past and get testimonials. Real important that you do that. Um, and then what's your offer? Uh, different than the solution. What's your offer? Remember, the solution is taking care of the problem. The the offer is really the prescription. You know, when you take penicillin, that's different than alleviating the infection, right? So there's two different things there. So what is your offer? What is your prescription, if you will? Uh, what happens after I take your offer? Spell out the next steps. Well, great, Tom. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to meet tomorrow. I'm going to bring some paperwork here, and I'm also going to have some advanced studies on things like price points and days on market and some other things. I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about what we can do uh, aesthetically to the house, some minor things that are going to make this house um, move on the market quicker than uh, its competition. And so here's the next step. We're going to meet tomorrow. We're going to have this thing listed by the end of the day. It's going to be up on the MLS uh, by Tuesday morning, the very next day. And you're going to be off and rolling. We're going to start showing the property this week and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Put out the steps of what's going on. Is there any guarantee? Well, I always tell agents and brokers, you're not going to guarantee that you sell their house. But I think the closest thing that you can come to a guarantee is using your expertise and what your history is, either with you or your brokerage. Uh, you know, real estate agents and brokers typically, although there's been some cases, typically aren't 100% guarantee and I, I sell your home or I find you a home to buy. Uh, but I think what you do is highlight your experience in there and that'll go a long way. The last three here. Uh, what is the customer's incentive to respond right now? I think you need to talk a little bit about that for the urgency to build. And one of the things you could talk about is what's going on in the market. We're at the high point in the market. So you want to make sure that you're selling right now to get the maximum dollar amount. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. The reverse is true. If you're dealing with a buyer in a market that's high priced, you might want to talk to them about getting into something before the prices go even higher. So uh, you can work that a few different ways, but what's the customer or your client's incentive to respond right now? Remember, they're not going to want to wait to solve the problem, whatever it is, upsizing, downsizing, retirement, uh, you know, uh, need to sell the house for the money, whatever it is, they're typically not going to want to wait on that. You should highlight that again, build that cortisol up and then give them the prescription that, that gives them, um, uh, the solution to their problem. 
The last two, what are their most frequently asked questions with an answer? Start to put that together. Matter of fact, have that on a sheet that you can hand to your client on your FAQs, frequently asked questions. I think that's insightful. I also think if you can beat your client to the punch in asking that question, it's going to convey to them that you're prepared, you've done this a lot, and you've done this so much that you're already predicting what the problems are going to be or what the questions are going to be. So I think that's really cool. And then finally, number 20, is there any specific jargon or language that connects your customer? In our case, it's GCI, gross commission income, ARV, after repair value, if there's repairs there, LTV, if there's loan situations. Just make sure you're going through all that and, and don't take for granted that your customer already knows what those are. I think that'll be really, really uh, important. This, my friends, is how you can fr uh, kind of uh, talk about the conversation here. We are going to continue all of this sales activity. Our next webinar is going to be talking about open-ended questions, closed-ended questions, uh, buying questions, conditions, objections in the sales model. These are ways that are along with spin, you are going to not only sell more, but you're going to make more as an agent. This is uh, a really, really important training. You should uh, definitely go out and read Neil Rackham's book, Spin Selling. And then I would practice these four things right here and using this as your guideline. You always know where you are in the sales process. So if you're sitting with a buy, sell, uh, rent, uh, that's our client, by the way, buy, sell, rent, you always know where you are. If you know the situation, have you identified the problem? If you haven't, identify it. If you once you identify the problem, then what is that problem? Uh, if solved, what does that imply? And if unsolved, what does that imply? And really kind of focus on the pain there. Increase that cortisol limit uh, uh, production from the brain, and then let them off the hook. Give them to the solution. Give them some good news so everything kind of flows down. And then finally, need payoff. The need payoff is always you, your broker. Uh, your your brokerage, you individually, your services. And that, my friends, is going to get you uh, to build a sales uh, scenario, um, a sales scenario that is going to give you consistent income as an agent broker. Again, most agent and brokers don't do this. They don't know anything about this. You do. That's why you're here. It does take practice. I'm going to be here to help you. So remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Uh, success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you make it. Let me know where you need help with this. This is going to be key in uh, you guys uh, having a successful career. The more you know about sales, uh, the better you get at it, the more money you're going to make, period. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great week. We will talk uh, next week on the training.